Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We made it through another week relatively unscathed. Yes, that's We're knocking true. it out. Come on, coronavirus vaccine. <laughs> yeah, we're hanging on for you. Come on, bring it. Yeah, well, I I pride myself on being pretty um, even keeled. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, I'll have to share you with this. I'll have to share this with you guys because I had quite a moment this week. Uh, with this nasty little guy who is some kind of area manager from the warehouse that we have our books in. We save our pallets that the books come on in on and um, we save them for the driver who delivers boxes to the warehouse facility. Okay. And he takes those pallets and he gets six dollars a piece for them. So we give him our pallets for him to make a little extra money. Right. Super easy. We put them out by the dumpster. Well this Area, I don't know exactly what he is. Area manager. I'm not sure that's what he is. He may just be, you know, I don't know what he is. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm up there filling orders at the warehouse, and he shows up, stomps up to the warehouse, and treats me like a criminal because I put this pallet. Well, you actually put the pallet out by the the dumpsters, and they he went back and looked at the footage and saw you carrying the pallet out there. Really? <gasps> How could you? He Which was, we've been doing for probably five or six years. He was watching satellite footage. He was watching you. So he stomps up and says, we know that you put that pallet out there. And I said, well, well we did. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> like it, I was going to say no. I'm bad. And so he makes a big deal of it and it goes on and on about it. And I have to tell you, I do not suffer fools. Mm -hmm. And I told him I didn't appreciate his tone, mm -hmm. which didn't sit well with him. Which <laughs> anyway, is usually, usually the last thing she says before she... <laughs> I was trying so hard to keep my cool yeah. because we're in the middle of filling all these orders and I keep thinking that he's going to lock me out of the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> all our ever books are in there. So I start picturing him naked and it really helps you to kind of get back into yourself and not buy into his silliness, you know. So he off he went. Terry comes back, goes get the pallet. Anyway, all of this to be telling you this because Terry says, after it's all over, everything's done, he says, he's going to show up in cereal. He's going to meet an untimely death in cereal, and I'm going to send him a copy of it. <laughs> Your enemy is my enemy, <laughs> and uh, I am not short of ideas about how to get rid of people in spectacular ways. So yeah, he's going in the book. Yeah, I can't wait. He is our enemy. Yeah. That's my favorite line in the movie, Ted, with the little bear. He's our enemy. She's our enemy. Okay, and speaking of the warehouse, we're busy filling all of the ever pre-orders, mm -hmm. and everything should be out by Tuesday. So you'll re begin receiving tracking information from Pitney Bowes. Uh, they send a track. What are you doing? I'm smelling the print. It smells good. <laughs> okay, guys. Good. See, this is what I have to live with. No wonder I lose my cool. <laughs> and I was also, I was also wondering why you look at me and laugh a lot. Yeah, oh now I know gosh. what you're doing. You're picturing me naked. Oh. Okay. Anyway, put the book down. Okay. You should be receiving tracking information from Pitney Bowes. It's being sent to the email that you used on your order. So, um, also. As an extra thank you, we've included a little bonus coupon, which we've never done before. Yeah. That you can use on your next order. Um, it's valid until mid-March. And it's good on any purchase, including our serial subscriptions and anything else on the website. So if you pre-order, you get this coupon code to use on your next order. So thank you guys so much. It All of this really is uh, just so great, helping us get through this crazy year. Yes, thank you. So... Um, that's all of the big news this week because we've been spending all our time at the warehouse fighting off uh, area managers. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it was just like, you know, uh, Game of Thrones or something. Oh, he man. came and challenged our castle. Yeah, you know, he did. And we have all our stuff in what there. What a nut job. Yeah. Anyway. But he's um, naked now. So, yeah. <laughs> I can never unsee that. <laughs> so, do you have anything else to add to this well, week? Well, I... Um, the book. I was looking at the book and... You now know, you were sniffing the book. I was, 
Smiling, oh. smiling, but we were having a moment. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, this is not my norm to have a book so thin. I usually have thicker books. But I thought, you know what? I have finally done my short story that I've admired so many other short stories, you know, and I'm not comparing. I'm just saying these are the books that I admired so much. Um, but, you know, like The Pro is a one off short story. And, you know, I Die at Midnight by Kyle Baker. This is a classic. And then, of course, the Black Terror books that I love so much. There's actually three of these, but um, these, you know, they're short stories. And who did The Pro? Oh, Amanda Connor and, and Jimmy Palmiotti. Yeah. Our buddies. Yeah. Funniest book in Garth Ennis. Uh, in Palm Outs. Um, but funniest book you'll ever read in your life. It's it's really great. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, recommend it for the whole family. Start, you know, <laughs> take it to kindergarten and no, read it to the class. <laughs> just a, just anyway, a warning. I finally got my short story, so I'm really happy about that. So, yeah. Uh, that was kind of a bucket list thing. So. Yeah, I was kind of shocked when I saw how then it was actually published. I know, we're so used to our yeah. deals. But, um, and, and I think this is a new printer that we used, and I think the paper may be a little thinner than yeah, what we're used to. I think the so. opacity is the same, but I think the paper is just a little bit thinner. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely is. Uh, especially when I look at, uh, on the my bookshelf collection here of comics, there's a lot, um, everybody else is using different papers, but the papers have changed. And maybe that's because we're using the new printer and we didn't know how to, you know, like, yeah. hey, we like the thick stuff. Yeah. Um, but hey, So anyway, good. I think they'll like the story. So yeah. uh, look for it soon in your, your mailbox. 72 pages of uh, wild stuff. It's not that wild. It's wild. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you ready to get on the hot seat? Yes. I forgot about the hot seat. Yes. Okay. okay. Let me get a sip of courage. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, our first questions today are from our friend Tony Rodriguez. Hi, Tony. They are kind of a nod to James Lipton uh, from the Actor Studio. I love that show. Yeah. Uh, if you were a color, what color? Well, would you your use? first question is, what is your favorite word? <laughs> um, My favorite word is yes. I love that word. The word. My favorite word is uh, grateful. Every... Oh, please. Hey. Oh, come on. Come on, Mr. Lipton. You asked. <laughs> My favorite word is grateful. Every day I'm grateful. Uh, I say grateful more than I say yes. What is your least favorite word? Of course, mine is no. Oh, please. <laughs> come on. Can I roll any bigger? Uh, my, my least favorite word is bald. <laughs> I wish that word didn't exist and there was no need for it. Well, I, I can understand that. <laughs> I get that me. word haunts me. Yeah. Okay. The next question is from Jeff Mazza. Or Mazza. I'm not quite sure how to say it. Okay. This is kind of geared towards me, but it really is your answer. Has Terry incorporated any of your personality traits? Personality, traits, mannerisms into any of his characters. If so, what characters and what traits? Okay, just remember, I'm Christmas shopping about now. <laughs> <laughs> just keep uh, that in mind. Just saying. Have you incorporated any of my traits into any of these? The number one trait that I incorporated from day one, uh, as soon as I met you, uh, is long legs. Uh, just, you know, I, lo I love your legs. Um, so from then on, my characters, you know, when I was drawing, my version of a beautiful woman has longer legs. Yeah, um, although I'm only 5'4". Only 5'4". I have the legs of somebody who's 5'7". Well, it's, it's my birth, seriously, is a birth, I don't want to say defect, but the, it is a birth thing. Uh, I'm just out of proportion. And the doctor has always said that. It's just crazy. You're out anyway. of proportion like a showgirl. <laughs> we, we don't need to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> They're out of proportion too, like in so a really you, good way. Do you have uh, traits that you've taken from anybody else that you know? Um, I've said, I've admitted a few times that there was a bartender we all knew back in the band days and that bartender traits, she was kind of the uh, one who could hang out with the guys easily. 
and um, she was a lot of her was in Kachu, oh, right? Okay. Um, I mean, you have it's good to know people like that in order to be able to write people like that. You can't, you can't only be around, you know, um, your mom and then write somebody like Kachu. You got to have some reference in life. Well, I know there have been. Uh... Like Aunt Libby is really a takeoff of my Aunt Sally. Oh, I yes. know. She is my Aunt Sally. That's kind of my crazy family right there. Yeah. And I will tell you a short little episode about Aunt Sally. When she was, when Terry first started doing Strangers in Paradise back in the 90s, she was in her 70s. Hmm. And um, I told her that Terry was doing a comic book. And she said, Well, can I get it? The at the toy store and I said no it's really more for adults and so she went around to all these adult bookstores and was asking for strangers in paradise and they'd say no ma'am we have nurses in paradise we have strangers in love we have but we don't have any strangers in paradise and she's like 78 and they don't know what to do with her <laughs> so she calls me one day and says I have looked everywhere for his book and I can't find it and she tells me this story, and of course I just die laughing. But bless she, her heart, she was supporting us. She was. She wanted to support you. Yes. And so uh, a couple years later, we were at a show, and a woman comes up to me and she says, "I know your aunt Sally. She comes in every month and buys Strangers in Paradise from us." And she was the manager of a comic book shop. Oh. And so I thought that was so sweet of my aunt Sally, who is Aunt Libby to a T. Yeah. And. Um, yeah. But she wanted to support you, so she went to all the porn shops in town. Yeah. Look at, look at Bless her it. heart. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the reason why that is so striking to us is because when that Strangers in Paradise first came out, we realized it was back in the Victorian age. So <laughs> this book was scandalous, and especially within the family circles. This belongs in a porn shop. I and, wouldn't have this in my house. <laughs> I wouldn't have this in my house. And bless Aunt Sally's heart, she actually went to a porn shop and looked for it because she <laughs> thought, well, okay, then let's go get it, you know. Is it between all these rubbery things? Where is it? <laughs> bless her heart. Yeah, so that's a, so you do take some um, yeah. some yeah. liberties with Libby people, would yeah. have done that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Aunt Libby would have done that. And yeah. Feisty and short and dependable as the day is long. And smoked cigarettes nonstop. No, nonstop. And had that smoker face. After, If you smoke cigarettes every day after 80 years, your face looks like a roadmap. And one time we had uh, a new little baby face-to-face uh, -face with the Aunt Sally. And the baby just looked at her for the, <laughs> like a minute straight trying to figure her out. And we were all laughing. And Aunt Sally just looked right back at her. <laughs> <laughs> So you do use some some yeah. characteristics for people. You can see how these moments come up. And in, just you in the wait, book. Mr. Area Manager of a Warehouse. Oh, I've got a good one for you, buddy. <laughs> I have got a good one for you. It's going to hurt. It's a okay. good thing I found comics, huh? Yeah. So um, what are you drawing today? Um, I'm drawing something that the universe needs really, really bad. Um, you know, the universe has a few problems. And uh, we can solve them, and uh, step one of solving them is to draw a new Batman character. So today I'm drawing Batman um, as a woman. Well, isn't that Batwoman? Nope. Not Batwoman, not Batgirl, not Dark Knight Robin taking on the mantle. This is a whole new character. Is it Batman? Her own thing. No, you got to get rid of the gender names. So we talk about getting rid of gender names. It's so this is just the Bat? Bat. The Bat. Oh, okay, so okay. You're going to watch me draw that from scratch, talk through the design, talk about the history of Batman, and then come up with our brand new... I thought you hated Batman. I, I yeah, I, I, I do hate Batman. That's why <laughs> we need to change him. So I've changed him for you. I fixed the problem for you, DC. I know you have a huge problem with this Batman thing. You can't get it to work. You can't get any of the movies made. or I know it's a problem. I fixed it for you. Okay, good to know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just want to take a second to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. This year in particular is the perfect time to think about what we're thankful for. Yeah. With everything crazy going on in the world, it's nice to sit back and think of what, what is good or what good is coming. So, um, it'll mean, just be in me, me and you for uh, Thanksgiving this year because of this crazy COVID thing. We don't want to pass it on to our, our 
older parents and our kids don't want to pass it on to us. They think of us as the older parents. So we're all doing our own thing, staying in. I'm cooking a huge Thanksgiving dinner. I don't eat meat. We'll have a whole turkey and all the trimmings. I don't know what we're going to do with that. Terry's going to be eating on it for weeks. <laughs> and you know what? I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's your favorite word. Anyway, we're thankful for all of you guys for your ongoing encouragement and support. Thank you. It's such a solitary career that we have. Um, and it's nice to know you guys are out there cheering us on. So uh, we really couldn't do it without you. So thank no. you so much. And now, what are you drawing? Oh, the back. cut that out. <laughs> no, that's in. <laughs> Okay, guys, have a good week, and we'll see you back here next Sunday. Terry, go ahead. Okay, we'll meet me here. Well, Christmas tree, oh, 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 Christmas tree. <sighs> Where's that damn tree? Hello, everybody. I was just thought I would just be the first to wish you Merry Christmas. Um, I can't wait for Christmas to get here because it'll signify that we're almost to the end of this damn year. And the sooner the better. <laughs> uh, not even the snowman will stay up and we need to drink plenty of nog to get through these holidays. So um, there you go. Merry Christmas. Um, I thought I would draw something really super important that the universe needs today. Uh, the universe needs a lot of things, but probably what we should start with first in order to fix the solar system is uh, we need a female Batman. Um, can I get a yes on that? Uh, I, I think the, um, the Batman character has had enough uh, Bruce Wayne's, um, it's time to turn it over to Francine. So, let's do a Batman, I'm Batman, look here. So I'm going to pull the chin down and get those eyes started. Those eyes are super important. You know, Batman is wearing eye makeup uh, around his eyes to uh, get those big holes to uh, stay dark which um, is hard to picture Batman taking time to pick out mascara at the uh, department store and, uh, you know, maybe even some eyeliner. I don't know. Um, but it's uh, something that definitely uh, Francine would be happy to do. So she probably already has what she needs in the drawer to do her Batman face. So let's get the face first. And then we put the mask on it. There's the top of the hairline, which also happens to be where that line is on the Batman mask. And then the mask is going to come right down in there. I'm feeling a little off center here. There. And it has to do with this chin. See, I have the eyes. The eyes are squared up this way. The chin is squared up that way. What the hell is wrong with me? Don't let your drawing get away from you like that. There we go, better. <clears throat> Where's my deal? Here it is. Okay, it's gonna be something like that. She's not gonna have that big old Bruce, Bruce jaw when I'm done. I'm just trying to get her all squared up. Ears in there, hairline in there, mask, 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 mask. Little pointy ears are going to go there. Maybe one's going to go that way, one's going to go that way, like radio antenna. Now she looks like Ant Woman, the wasp. There is no Ant Woman. There is a character we need, desperately. The one thing I liked a lot about the Batman um, uniform was that the cape had this uh, Roman robe effect over the shoulders. Um, the one that I liked did, and the way I drew it always did. 
it didn't lie flat on the shoulders like a piece of vinyl, like the Hollywood stuff. It ha In the comics, it had a Roman thing to it, which really looked cool to me. If you just lay that down flat like a piece of plastic, uh, you know, like the Hollywood stuff, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't as fond of that. And I think in the Hollywood, the point of the Hollywood design was that it was going to be made out of bulletproof Teflon material, um, so it would hang different. So not criticizing that. Um, it's actually a much smarter military move. But in the comic books, this was fabric. Uh, because Batman was basically an updated Zorro, and Zorro just put on a, a coat and hopped on his horse. So, in the old school days, you just put on some a bunch of cotton, went out there and did your best. <laughs> that won't work anymore, will it, guys? Now you need the Teflon stuff and the bulletproof and... And in the old days, uh, the utility belt was all about uh, handy little uh, tool time Tim, tool man stuff, you know, like, oh, and I might need a, a wire to climb up the rose trellis. Um, I might need a little gas pellet uh, to toss it down and get away like Moriarty or something. That's not how you say his name, is it? Moriarty? Morior. Well, how do you pronounce the name for the... Um, Sherlock Holmes villain, Professor Moriarty. I'm putting, I think I'm putting an extra syllable in there. Um, this uh, little belt buckle here reminds me of something you would get in the Boy Scouts um, that would um, glow in the dark if you pushed a little button. So it's basically like that. These little guys all had caps and tops on them. And then you could flip a cap up and inside there would be like a little, you know, um, acrobatic wire with a little grappling hook on it. And um, maybe you could pull this one out and it was a, this one right here uh, was actually one of those little uh, battery operated fans. Because sometimes it gets hot. Um, you know, so that that was a little fan. This guy right here was actually, um, you pull it out, and it's a foldable pair of reading glasses because uh, Batman's getting older. <laughs> uh, I don't have time to go over all of them for you, but um, just in case you were wondering what was in there, that's what was in there. Uh, I think this one has a Snickers bar in it. Um, okay, let's get back to really, 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 really serious stuff here. Okay, Batman, for once in his life, is not jumping and pulling his knees up and showing off that he can do still do that at his age. He's just standing there like, oh, come on. Um, this is our chance, maybe our only and last chance, to put a really nice uh, full skirt on Batman uh, or the Batwoman woman as Batman. Uh, so there's your last chit and what do you think? Yes? No? No? Okay. <laughs> I just thought I'd run that by you. <laughs> okay, no skirt. Uh, gosh, you guys are tough. It just seems weird to... I don't know. If you put... Say for instance, if that was, you know, the usual Superman underwear, that would look like, suddenly this looks like a sumo wrestler rig. You know, you've got a big uh, fat belt and then uh, the panties, um, the diaper thing, you've got fat going on. So I guess that's why they decided not to put an extra uh, pair of underwear on the outside. Um, and they just went with the uh, leotard effect, which was a good call. Look at me, like, like they needed my opinion on something they did 75 years ago, but it's sometimes it's good to just you know think this thing through when you do your own character like why did they do that? Okay, um, there's the basics These guys here used to be um, um, Probably was developed in a wind tunnel it showed that his uh, arm could swing punches faster if he had these little uh, 
fins on here, which is what they were putting on all the modern cars back then. You know, remember that the, the Batmobile was basically a big penis with a fin on it. Um, that's because that, that fin really helped that penis fly down uh, Gotham Main Street. I, um, did it actually have like a turbine fan right there? Like a hole in the penis? Like that? And then there was the cockpit. <laughs> I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to say it like that, but yeah, there was the cockpit where they all sat, uh, just behind the, um, engine head of the penis. And then you've got this guy here and then the jet exhaust coming out that way. Actually, this was before jet. So that was probably a Chrysler six cylinder engine. <laughs> now or a Cadillac 12 cylinder. They actually, I think they had 12 cylinder engines back in the forties, uh, for Cadillacs. Yeah, I may be wrong on that, but okay. This is, there's a lot of, of uh, dangerous metaphorical sex symbol stuff with the Batman franchise um, because it was developed during a time when people were uh, conscious of that. I mean, they were still talking about Freud and uh, Jung and all those guys, and um, the whole point of Batman was the psychology of the criminal, uh, fear and force, um, and all that, and Batman was going to use that to his effect. So um, a lot of this stuff is imagery that was designed on purpose to scare the dim-witted criminal who believes in symbols and shadows in the night. Uh, which is why they were trying to be, the criminals were trying to be the shadows in the night. So when Batman shows up and then he is the real deal and much scarier and much more um, uncompromising, um, that was the effect. That was the only way to get through to the criminals and instill fear in them and make them think twice before they went out there and terrorized a um, uh, J.C. Penney store or Macy's or whatever was going on out there. Now the cool thing about having Francine as a Batman is that you could, instead of getting those bee sting lips from Michael Keaton, you can have that really cool dark lipstick. And guess who could get, finally gets to wear the goth eyeliner and get away with it? So I'm using my number four here to really dig in. And the eyeshadow uh, on the, all around that eye. There you go. Looking good, Francine. Looking good. You wear it well. I'm going to fix this uh, head shape on the cowl. I mean, it got a little out of, away from me up there. Although she does have an absolute head full of hair that's stuck up in there somewhere. I. <laughs> Let's talk about the hair. Um, I always thought that the Batwoman thing, uh, pulling the hair out here, uh, was not cool. Um, I, I don't. I don't think we. I didn't want like that. Um, and can I point out? I have never seen a woman athlete uh, working, doing her thing, getting serious with her hair down like that. If the, at the very least it would have been a, a ponytail at the back, and then you've got you know. But it, you're not going to see it from up here. But think about the soccer players, the uh, Olympians, uh, the softball players, uh, or, or go short. Uh, it's very possible, I think, that this she would not have long hair. Long hair was, was there for um, the men of the 40s and 50s who liked women with long hair because it was sexy. And then... Um, that changed um, uh, star by star as one star after another began to get short hair and men thought, oh, well, okay, that's sexy too. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I would very well bet that this Batwoman would have a short athletic haircut. And then if she wanted to have an alias and work in the office during the day, then she could wear a wig. And that would be the, the good old fashioned um, the way to fool that, wouldn't it? The wigs have gotten really good. Um, okay, so let's get busy here. I think it's so cool how the bat symbol works. Just put that right down the middle right there, like a chevron. And then you can really take advantage of the forms right here. And this is really gonna look cool. Pull the edge of the wing up like that. Notice I didn't stop for the little the middle dip, the middle dip because this is super important is to get this one curve really right is super important and then you go back and add the middle dip that's a little tip for you that looks like the old uh, Oldsmobile emblem doesn't it that's basically how you do it so I've broken the symbol down to just the basic um, forms oh my god I hope this is recording or I'm gonna gonna go nuts okay now you can do your little dip and that and then that'll be a certain color whatever color we design I'm gonna leave the entire color design of this costume up to you um, you're gonna be the designer on this book um, I propose that we not put in a circle around here and if you did do a circle it should be a smaller one like that something like that to offset it if you wanted to do that like yellow and black and this is gray um, what do you think of that about that mr. DC and Francine is let's face it Francine uh, is blessed with a figure um, she's buxom um, but um, when it comes time to go out here and fight I think she will be wrapped tight so these forms will be very tight, almost Victorian tight. So nothing is going to bounce. There's nothing for you to go put your movie on slow-mo and watch it over and over and over. That's not going to happen, guys. This stuff is wrapped tight. Um, and maybe the first thing a real bad guy would do, or a bad woman, is try to hit her right there. And uh, I think there's probably going to be some... Uh, something more than cotton protecting her so that if she gets hit anywhere in here it's not going to be like hitting somebody in a t-shirt there's more protective material there than you might think okay I'm kind of there um, let's get this cape to come out here and cover that R-rated car that's back there also this brings up another thing if um, Batwoman, Batman is a woman um, bat person. What's that car gonna look like? I mean, if we're gonna make a Freudian car, um, it's certainly not gonna. I don't. I don't think this uh, independent-minded uh, badass is gonna be happy about driving a giant penis. And I don't think that the little uh, ninja toys of the movies are that much better. Um, in terms of like not just being a boy toy so this person this woman this crime fighter she needs some wheels um, it's very likely uh, you know a bike would be the fastest but a bike is not the best thing all the time um, you know what for all I know maybe she's got this um, Big military, big ass military vehicle. Probably not. I think probably she has the fastest car in town. Something that is incredibly fast. And I'll maybe we'll design that next time. But there you go, that woman. Um, as I as I would draw her. So, Merry Christmas, you guys. It's coming up soon. I can't wait. Get this damn year over with. <laughs> I hope you guys have fun drawing. Why don't you try to draw your own female version of another uh, DC character? 
um, and see what you come up with. Um, where's the female flash? You know, and do it your way. Try that. Something like that. Uh, and let me know what you come up with. Uh, post your pictures in the in the in the comments section. That'd be really cool to see. We'll start a revolution. Okay, have fun drawing. And Merry Christmas.